My next guest is one of those actors who, uh, whose career I think would be the most kind of fun to do. Uh, in various films, he plays all kinds of things. He's been a Chinese cook, a, a Scottish police officer, a Greek peanut vendor, a Hindu doctor, a Russian submarine captain. Once he even played his own age, size, and appearance. Uh, he's <laughs> presently at the Westbury Music Fair in, in the Rothschilds. And uh, a superb actor and folk singer, Mr. Theodore Bikel. <laughs> Say, how do you say Rothschild in, in the European version? I've heard people who know them, family, say Rothschild well, and Rothschild. Well, it Rothschild de depends. And if you're German, you say Rothschild, and if you, are the, if you refer to the French branch, it's de Rothschild. And if you're English, you say Rothschild. And in the show, they say what? Rothschild. Rothschild, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else? Otherwise, nobody would understand. Yeah. Do you, do you get like the part you play, you know, that problem that some character actors have? The only way they can do it is to become that around the house and uh, on the way to work and... You know, <laughs> my you know. family feels that way. My wife and my... Yeah? Show, well, my wife especially. I mean, when I played Tevye, for example, I was very humble around the house all the time. When you were in Fiddler? Uh, oh, Fiddler, very humble. You know? yeah. First of all, I felt constrained. You know, I don't want to live in a big house with 12 acres. You know, it's not right for Tevye. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm playing Maya Rothschild, the house is too small. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel obeisance is, is due. You, know? you become a bit of a tyrant, are you? An overlord? Or I hope so. Yeah. I, no, not really. But I, at least I feel that way. I feel yeah. that somehow people should at least uh, genuflect. I don't know. Some... You, want, you want to be obeyed. Does, does your wife resent this some, uh, this new side yes. to you? Yes, I, I yeah. think she does. At heart, she's a woman's liber or whatever. You call that. Now she insists upon, and quite rightly, upon her rights. Woman's liberal. A little joke with no, no humor in it <laughs> on my part. Uh, how, how did it affect you when you played in Sound of Music, the father of 12 children? Where, how did you behave well, then? Was that? I only counted seven. Did I miss up? Well, that was your interpretation. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> no, <laughs> I played uh, the, the Sound of Music really was kind of unreal to me, uh, even while I was doing it. it it's kind of through a, a, a sort of a pink gauze. Really? You know, even the Nazis that were there weren't really Nazis, and you know, they took away all the swastikas and out of, you know, at first when we rehearsed it, you know, everybody went Heil Hitler, and afterwards, you know, when we actually played it, it was Heil, sort of. They softened it? Oh, very, because it was, yeah. you know, Mary Martin and the Rogers and Hammerstein, and it's, it, it's not nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say, I gotta ask you this. I, uh, this is a terrible thing to admit, but I saw you in something and I didn't see the end of it. What? It's just flashed through my mind. Well, what is now it was a Hitch Alfred Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. It must it's probably a rerun. I saw it out of out of town. There was one television set. The phone rang. I don't know what happened. You were in it. There was a strangler loose in London, and you were the police officer. Absolutely. And several people were suspects, as in uh, Hitchcock things. I played a real Scottish policeman who was trying to track down the strangler. That's the one. And you um, did it with a Scottish accent. Oh, hi. And uh, <laughs> you really want to know? Because I, I don't know who it was. There was a doctor, I believe. There was a... Sus oh, no, not you. I was the strength. With that kind face. <laughs> I can't believe it. A man's got to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what it will be like. See, after I do the roster, I'm going to do Jacques Brel up in Massachusetts. Now, how, what can I become then? kind of French that or escapes Bain, me. whatever. I really don't know what to do with that. I don't know. I, could, I can't help I you on that. that. I know how you could help me, though. I get put down for being awesomely goyish all the time. <laughs> when, 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 no, when, it's the truth. When Mel Brooks comes on, he just lays me low mm. for that. Now, uh, humorously, of course. Right. Is there some hip Yiddish expression that I could delight and surprise my friends with that's... <laughs> That's new I, uh, I, well, first of all, there are certain things that you can do, but some of them are med medicinal, and I wouldn't want to go in, into that all right. uh, to, to become Jewish. Uh, I think you, you better ask Maya Kahane about that. After all, he's a... He's a... Okay. How come I didn't think to bring my clock? When, no, I always, get, uh, I always get put down by Brooks, who thinks that I would order mayonnaise on my derma or something like <laughs> that at a restaurant. I, I don't know. I'm not going to take much more of it. We have a station Hopes break. We'll be right back. Say, just for fun, the other night I asked uh, 
uh, I asked a guest if he knew what Hava and Nagila meant. He didn't. I th and I thought I knew. Uh, someone had told me once. Well, was well, it somebody who might have known, who would have known, who should It was known. Richard Benjamin. We'd been talking about uh, Portnoy's complaint. From Portnoy's complaint, you don't learn any Hebrew. Oh, you don't? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, anyway, I asked him, and he, he, he said, I know, but I'm not going to tell you. Well, so we'll I, never know if he knew or not. Do you want me to tell you? Because I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to tell. Okay. It means let's rejoice. Very easy. That's what I thought. I think yeah. I said let us be happy, but that was, yeah. that was close enough. When you, you did Fiddler on the Roof in Vegas, mm. and that seemed very strange when they did it. There were jokes at the time, like, were you going to do it topless and all that, you know, about it being in Vegas and all. It, how did it go there? Uh, amazingly well. First of all, uh, once you get on the stage and you do that play, uh, it's Tevye and it's Anatevka and it, uh, you forget that you're where you are and what a, I don't know how many gamblers we groomed. Uh, there were nuns who came. You, uh, normally they don't come into those places, but they did for our play. And even on New Year's Eve, they had, out of habit, noisemakers on the tables while we were playing and nobody used them. Strange. Which was rather nice. Conflict of yeah. setting and show and all. Can you do something for us just here, just uh, <coughs> the way you will sit at a party and suddenly... Sure burst forth in song. Yeah, replete with 24 <laughs> instruments and all. Mm -hmm. Yes, Musical, uh, mysteriously all right. I'll do you. one from uh, the play that I'm doing at the moment, The Rothschilds, which actually I do in the play when I'm 70 years old, uh, is where he's just before the Peace Congress, Aix-la-Chapelle, where he's trying to break down the ghetto walls. And uh, he says to his wife that he wants, while he's still alive, he wants to see that happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> In my own lifetime, I want to see the fighting cease. In my own lifetime, I want to see my sons enjoy the fruits of peace. While I'm still here, I want to know beyond a doubt that no one can lock us in or lock us out. We have climbed higher, much higher than I thought we'd climb. It's a long journey, and even though the end's in sight, there's not much time. I want to know we haven't built on sand in my own lifetime. In my own lifetime, I want to see our efforts blessed. In my own lifetime, I want to see the walls come down and then I rest this Moses wants to see the promised land in my own lifetime Very nice. Yes. It's a Nebraska accent. It Very is. nice. Well, we have a conductor from Arkansas in the, in the show, in the so theater? it all helps. Yeah. Uh, on November, October 29th of last year, uh, Ambassador Bush from the UN was a guest on the show, and he made uh, certain references that night to the Jewish Defense League. And Rabbi Meyer Kahani, who is the head of that organization, asked that he be on the show to uh, answer uh, some of the things that were said there. and. Um, and ABC granted his request. He's the founder of the internet. He's, he's the founder and international chairman of the JDL, as it's commonly known. And I guess it's most visible member. You've probably read and heard a great deal about him. Will you welcome Rabbi Meyer Kahane?
once again, it is Kahani, so that we yes, it is. get the name get the name correctly. Uh, did, did you uh, do you want to start? I guess the best thing would be to start with what Ambassador Bush said that offended you, and because uh, that was what you wanted. To well, I think that uh, when you're when you're dealing with problems that are as complex as this Soviet Jewish Jewish question, I think that the opportunity to hear every single single side has to be has to be given now if uh, mr bush feels that our our view is not uh, correct then certainly he's in the company of many many people uh however i would say that in a democratic country and in a country which seeks to get the truth certainly a point of view which is held by a great many, many people, including a great many Russian Jews, should have the right to be heard. I don't know why Bush did not want this uh, view to be heard. I would probably guess that he was willing to appear, but having perhaps spoken to various Jewish leaders, mm -hmm. their point of view changed his point of view. So really, in effect, I'm not well, didn't particularly want to appear angry at, uh, at uh, Bush. Mm -hmm. I'm angry at people who don't want to hear points of, points of view, even those that are not popular to be heard. Mm -hmm. But your, your original request was in response to what he said that night on the show, I believe. And I just wondered to, what, what, the, what the things were that he said that you, made you want to say, if I were there, I would, or if I feel I ought to be able to say, well, to respond to that. What I really, really wanted is to get as much exposure as possible for the Soviet Jewish question. You know, I'm out on campuses a great many, many times. I've spoken to dozens and dozens of them. And I see Jewish youngsters marching for all kinds of causes, for Angela Davis, for the Berrigans. Well, there is a Soviet Jewish cause, which I would put is not less important than Angela Davis. I'd like a name like Sylvia Zalmanson to be known to the millions of people who know Angela Davis. That's why I wanted, really, to be on this show. I wanted Mr. Bush and all the other people to know that if we had left the Soviet Jewish question to Mr. Bush, no one would have known of Sylvia Zalmanson. If we had left the question of, of the Russian Jews to most of the respectable people this Soviet Jewish question would not have reached the point of a beginning of a solution that it has now. You and better if, explain who Sylvia Zalmanson is. But. Okay. Sylvia Zalmanson is one of the Leningrad Jews that was arrested, charged with attempting to leave the USSR without an exit visa. And she was sentenced to 10 years in a labor camp. She and others, there are many, many names. There's Reza, Reza Palotnik. There are names that most people don't, don't know. Dimshits. There are so many, many of these people whose names have to be known. And I'm really afraid that the respectable way, you know, the nice way, which was tried for 50 years, is not the kind of a way which, unfortunately, uh, gets these names known. You may not like what we do, but I think that, to be honest, the things that we did was certainly among the leading factors to put these names and this issue on page one of a newspaper that usually prints all the news that fits. I'm, I must take issue with, uh, with that point of view because I think what got on page one were certain, uh, you might call them uh, flashy pyrotechnical uh, actions that, got, that do get the attention of page one. It was not the plight of Soviet Jews. It was through a, a, what we call a hintertil, a back door, that the Soviet Jews were also involved in those. But uh, whatever the Jewish Defense League did, for example, in opposing Mayor Lindsay for re-election about four years ago, that's before the JDL uh, got involved with, uh, with Soviet Jews, also got on page one, because such tactics always do. Uh, and I, I would hate for the impression to prevail, and I'm not here because I think it's a distasteful uh, spectacle for Jews to devour each other mentally or in any other uh, fashion, uh, for, the, for the impression to remain that uh, the Jewish community 
was not vocal, vociferous, and even if you care to put it that way, militant on the subject of uh, Soviet Jewry, albeit nonviolent. And I think there is a climate of violence which has been created or condoned recently by the, the Jewish Defense League, which I think is antithetical to Jewish law, to Jewish tradition, to Jewish thinking, to the Jewish way of life. We cannot become like our enemies. Well, I think that... I guess, uh, excuse me. No, I guess that's the crux of the difference yeah. between you and, and, the, and the, the Jews who disagree with you in print and uh, uh, publicly in public statements. And we have to take a pause now, but we can get to that. We'll be right back. Now, here's a different way to write with a banana. Thank you.